Uh, my name is John Mayock. I reside here in Gurtalo and Dutch Reach, Westport. I was born in the United States where my parents had been immigrants and had married over there. And at an early age in my life, when I was three, three, three and a half years of age, they purchased a farm of land here beside Westport. And I'm here since. That was in 1939. Um, we increased the acreage by purchasing some neighbouring lots of land and I was I went to school in Westport and have lived in Westport since. Where was the school John that time? The um, brother school, the boys school was where John Storch is now. Uh, previous to that we went for about two years to the convent national school uh, up on Ashmow Street, up at Hastings College. And um, then we went down, when we made the first communion, we were led down to the Christian Brothers. And they had a secondary school, national school was downstairs, the secondary school was upstairs. What years were then? This would be from about 1942, 43, on to the 50s. That was the position until the brothers school then moved down to the Newport Road and the, and when did that the, the school yeah. was uh, sold, it was first sold to the Hughes group who had a wholesale premises there and some offices and um, I'd say that was in the 60s, 70s. Castle Bar Street was of course a different place altogether at that stage there was a lot of residential dwellings in it. Now. Um, in school, to go to school that time, uh, across the fields from here into town, in, in by where Allergan is now, down uh, in Paddock Road, down across from where, uh, down between Brian's house and what is now Seamus Hughes's offices, there was a pathway down there, was a big wall across there and there was a, a, a door in it. And at that time, numbers of people from the town had cows grazing in the paddock, what we call the paddock, at a few shillings a week. And you'd have people from the town milking their cows <laughs> there when I'd be going to school. That's how we knew the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, um, that's, uh, that's, it's, uh, the milk, of course, at that time was very valuable, I suppose. There was no such thing as bottled milk. Certain farmers delivered milk in bulk around the town and measured it out by the pint. And uh, usually bicycles and other had delivery po pony and horses and traps for delivering it. Who were the suppliers at that time? The main suppliers at the time? Farmer was? The main suppliers would be, uh, well, on this, on this road here. Nearly everybody on the Lodge Road area, that in Talbot, for that, and that's the house on the head of the road, we are known as Crawford's in recent times. Uh, Monsters, Stephen Keane, Mike Keane, in Gurthrow, Harry Clinton, and, and Matty Monaghan, uh, the McHales, Teddy McHale's parents were at it, and then in Clacher you had uh, the Borks. That would be Stanley Burke's parents, uh, and uh, of course Willie Jarts of Clara. He was a fairly large supplier. Now I, uh, I don't realise who was at it out on Sheru, uh, a man named Foy. But there were a lot of people supplying it from this side anyway. Yes, obviously. It was. Yeah, big supplier. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people from this side. But it was, I think, nearly up Calabon as well, that area, there was a lot as well at it, and out the key area as well. I wouldn't know that. So you got into school anyway? You got into school anyways. Um, bicycles were a novelty at that time. Uh, I got my first bicycle, I'd say, around 1950. Um, but I never used it going to school. Uh, later on in, in school, I moved up to the vocational school which would be, in later life years, it became uh, the UDC offices. It's between the Castle Court and uh, PJ Kelly Limited there. And uh, um, that was the vocational school. It's now owned by Corcoran's. 
and uh, Jim Ward was the principal there at the time I'm speaking of. You had a man named Damery who taught us welding and all types of mechanical work. Jim Ward was a uh, woodwork teacher himself, and now I've been the headmaster in it. And uh, you had a man named Kinney who taught us mathematics and Irish and English. Uh, there was an, also a, a number of lady teachers in it who taught the girls uh, cooking and bookkeeping, shorthand and all this type of stuff. But uh, uh, th th that was, there used to be a little bit of friction between it and the brother's school because the Protestant Brigade, they didn't uh, teach religion as religiously as the Christian brothers. Now, um, as we go on, which is quite yeah. Is it? What's the next, what's the next subject? Oh, um, were the schools strict at that time? Oh, the schools were strict. Hmm. Yes, the brother school would be very strict. How about your school? The, the vocational school? Yeah. Uh, that, was, uh, that was a much an easier, civilised type of place oh. altogether. But the, the other place you'd get slapped if you were late. You'd get slapped if you didn't turn up at a quarter to twelve once a month to go to confessions. Uh, they were marched in frog marched down the uh, down Castlebar Street to the church on the I think it was the third Saturday of each month for to go to confessions. Uh, I hated it because my parent father would like me to be picking potatoes or something useful around the mm -hmm. land, as indeed all the rural areas. There wasn't many rural children going to the school in Westport at the time I was speaking of because there was no transport. This is the time in the 40s when I was going to national school, petrol was rationed, cars were not. But if two cars went down the road, everybody looked at them to see who it was. The priest had a car, the doctor had a car, the veterinary surgeon had a car, and there was two, uh, about six taxis in, in town as well. Who was the doctor here that time? Oh, Dr. McGreal was the, the, the leading doctor here in town. He lived where, where Seamus Hughes lives today. Uh, he was a native of the town. There was a doctor, uh, there was a retired a doctor, Morton, uh, who lived where the Castle Court Hotel is. Uh, he used to go the road, he was a retired man. He used to go the road here walking, we knew him very well. And uh, uh, the Morton. There was a Dr. Desmond Morton who lived where, the, where Patrick Durkin's office is today. Then there was a Dr. Campbell who was the dispensary doctor. He lived uh, on the distillery road. And there was a. He was Dentist Campbell's father, was he? Sorry? Was he John Campbell's yes, father? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, there was John, John Campbell's father, surely. Uh, there was various doctors then that came short periods. There was Dr. Rabbit up on the top of the town, and there was a Dr. Tobin. Uh, Sean Tobin. John Tobin. He was, I think that man is still alive over in Castle Bar. Um, uh, was, oh, Who were the priests at that time, when you were in the 40s priests. and 50s? Can you remember them? Um, the A.G. him in Westport was a Father Daly. Uh, there was a Father Gunnigan, a uh, Father O'Grady. They were the ones who attached to Westport when we came here. I know that because we had, we had the country stations immediately after coming to Gortoro, uh, but within the first year of it, and these were looked on as uh, uh, the young lads like me at the time. If, if they had descended from the moon, I wouldn't be more impressed by them. Mm. And uh, yes, that's how I remember their names. Then, of course, kind of Cummins came. He replaced one of them and uh, had a Galen, but they were in more recent times. Right. The places in it. So you got out of secondary school and you finished? I the got time. out of secondary school, yes. I couldn't stick to Latin. Uh, you'd have to make that and, uh, and some piece of bird lodging in his child. It would take what you uh, it was Latin. You had to learn Irish first and you had to transfer, translate the Irish then into Latin. Now, that I think was deft for a rural Ireland of the, at that era. 
Det er definitivt difficult, isn't it? Ja, det er I recently came across an old photograph of my confirmation class. Uh, confirmation was about that time was a bit third year. And there was 28 of us in that photograph. Only three of the 28 remained on in Westport. Now, they didn't all leave Ireland, but they all left Westport. Nothing here? There was nothing here. There was only myself, uh, Frankie Madden, the late Frankie Madden, whose people worked with CIE and he got a job at CIE and the inlines. And that's the only three out of the 28 that remained on in Westport. And did many of them go to England and America? Well, the last of them went to. The last of them went. Some of them now returned, in fairness, a few of them returned again. But they, they spent a number of years in England, or a few in Dublin, things like that. But they were only the three out of the 28, but the roots down in Westport. And what did you do after school then? After school. When you finished school, yeah? Farming? Well, farming, mm. yes. You stayed? I stayed. You yes. stayed. 